Why is it that some Christians want to believe science as opposed to the Bible? People don't want to feel like they're left out, and so there's this attempt to mix science and a secular interpretation of science into the Bible. But the Bible doesn't allow us to do that. If science is properly interpreted, then the biblical account makes sense. The Bible should come first, and we should interpret the science yep. based on the biblical account. We're out there saying to people that you can trust the Bible, and because you can trust the Bible, you can trust the, the gospel message that yeah. the, the, the Bible has. Trust the God of the Bible. Trust the God yeah. of the Bible. Welcome to 24-6 with Mark James from Creation Ministries International. And Mark, we did promise this time we'd talk a little bit about natural selection, um, which I think a lot of people still don't understand the difference between natural selection and Darwinian evolution. Yes. In fact, natural selection was first proposed by a creationist. Oh, is that right? Uh, before, long before Darwin, actually. Um, and yes, there is this tendency to conflate natural selection and evolution. And people say, say you know, I, I can see how natural selection, um, choosing the, the, the best, the, 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 what, what can reproduce the most, yep. could improve something. Survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest, yes. Uh, and um, people see that and they think, well, that's, that's evolution. So we see proof, proof of evolution all the time. Yeah, I remember John Mackay in, in one of the debates that we went to and he said the problem with evolutionists is they define evolution as change. Yes. So every time you see change, they go, aha, evolution. You go, well, actually, natural selection isn't evolution. It's not, it's not uh, an adding process, it's a subtracting process. And, and, and that's the thing, is that evolution requires things to uh, go from less complex to more complex. Yeah. And actually, evolution doesn't require that, but because we are more complex than a single-celled organism, and that's where we've come from, then somehow evolution has to explain that. Yeah, well, I love the the, the video, uh, and again, it's one of the, the ones that you have with with uh, CMI, uh, the voyage that changed the world about Darwin, and it talked about. Dar I mean, uh, again, we, we can knock Darwin, but he wasn't stupid. He I mean, certainly, he certainly wasn't. wasn't a scientist, but he wasn't stupid. Uh, and I wonder, you know, if you look at um, a Galapagos tortoise, as a for instance, it has, for one of its limbs, it has a single bone an elbow, two bones, a wrist, and five phalanges. Yes. And you could look at that and you could say, you know, I could see how over millions and millions of years of uniformitarianism that could evolve into a human arm. Yes. But if you go into the DNA and into the cell, and I think, I wonder what would have happened if Darwin had had that information? Would he have still made those assumptions? We, we can't, no, we no, can't no, answer that no. question. Uh, and... Um, it, it, going down that sort of track um, just confuses matters yeah. very much so. Um, the, the, um, the issue is that people see these changes at the body um, parts level yeah. Yeah. and they think, yes, I can see that happening. But what they don't realise is that it actually has to be at the genetic level that it happens because, first of all, there has to be programming to make these things happen, but there also has to be um, a way of passing the information on from one, uh, from parent to child. Yep. So, and, and that happens in the DNA. So any of these changes that happen have to happen within the DNA. So we're not just looking at body parts, yeah. we're looking at programming. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and again, John Sanford in his book, The um, Genetic Entropy, he, he talks about that. and. It's not hidden by the evolutionary um, talk, but it's certainly not mentioned out loud, is that the mutations are simply letters in the mitochondrial DNA, and it's the DNA self-correcting. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I've got autocorrect on my text, you know, <laughs> and I wish it was self-correcting. Go, no, no, that's not what I meant to say. Yeah. You should have known that, but the DNA is... So if you get a mutation... Then when the DNA is passed, I go, no, 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 that's wrong. It's supposed to be that. Yes. And, and the, the thing is with, with mutations as well is uh, mutations are like um, if you had a, a, a copy of a book and um, when, you made, when, when you reproduced that book, uh, you, you changed a few of the letters. 
you didn't decide which letters, you just, the, the letters were changed. Yep. Um, are those letters going to improve that book? or are they going to cause problems for that book? And more often than not, they will um, corrupt problems. the yeah. information. Yeah. They will corrupt the information. And, um, and so what evolution requires is that not only do those changes improve the book, but they improve the book significantly over time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, from what we now know about DNA, and, and we're learning more and more about it all the time, is that it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. So the only way it could have worked, and, and I want to talk about biblical kinds in a minute, but the only way it could have worked is by us devolving from a, um, call it a higher species, down to where we are. There is no way we could have evolved from a lower species up to where we are. And what we see in genetics is exactly that happening. Um, every uh, human generation, uh, every new human being has between 100 and 300 extra mutations. So compared to your parents, I'm afraid to tell you, Rob, you are a mutant. I'm a mutant. You're a mutant. <laughs> yeah. What's and my when, superpower? And when I say mutant, uh, you, you're not an X-Man. Uh, you're no, an X-Man. No. You're not getting better. Uh, everything is is devolving. Yeah. Everything is, uh, there is a, a, a reduction in complexity. J uh, DNA is getting jumbled. Now, as you said before, that there are, there are um, mechanisms within our DNA to, to fix a lot of these um, changes. So there's a lot of mutations that get fixed, but there are some, still some that, that get through that. to the next generation. There is one particular secular scientist who did some calculations and reckoned that the human, um, human species um, is declining in fitness by between 3 and 5% uh, every generation. Now, if you work on that sort of basis, then we're going downhill. But if you turn it around and go backwards into yeah. history, then we're actually getting more and more fit as, as you go back backwards into history. Backwards in history. Yes. Yeah. Which confirms the biblical account yes. of a perfect creation that was affected by the yeah. fall. And I, and I believe that if you if you do that reversal with the number of, and I can't remember how many generations it was, but it works out at about 6,000 years. To, um, to a human being of the fitness level of one, uh, depending on how uh, on the mutation rate that you right. um, yeah. that you build into it. So again, there are assumptions based yeah. uh, that that are based on these calculations. So we can't know for certain, but certainly uh, it can fit very easily with the biblical account, and um, and that's what we would expect to find. Okay, so let's go to the biblical account. One of the problems that people have is with Noah's Ark, and I love the fact that Ken Ham's done this massive lifestyle arc in America that people go, <gasps> Have you been Was there? That? No, not yet. I have. Oh. <laughs> and it's amazing. No, it really us. is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's the, he has a creation museum there yeah, as well. Yeah. Uh, and they are spectacular. But even with the size of the arc, people still go, how can you get all the different species of animals in the world on that arc? And the answer is, because of natural selection, you don't have to. You don't have to get all the species. Um, the Bible talks about the created kinds. And uh, what we do know from natural selection is that from one particular kind over time, um, uh, at creation ministries, we talk about God building into the genetics of, uh, of the kind enough variability so that the, that kind, as it spreads out from, from creation, from the ark, mm -hmm. can actually um, uh, fit into different environments. So what happens effectively as is um, you start off with the created kind and as they move into different environments, they become slightly different. There are different parts of their DNA that become more important in certain environments. And over time, they separate far enough so that we would call them separate species. Separate species. So they diversify into they, the species. Yeah, that's yeah. what happens. And and uh, But if you t reverse that back, it means that there doesn't need to be all these individual species on the ark, just the basic kinds. And it's interesting that we, I mean, you and I are old enough to remember Lassie. You know, come home, Lassie. You know. Well, some of us are old enough it's to remember right. I'm old enough to remember <laughs> Lassie. Um, the, the, the beautiful collie with its beautiful coat and, and, and the long, thin nose and very, very intelligent dog. That was the whole point of Lassie, was that the collies were very intelligent. But then people started breeding them for that thin face. And if you look at collies today, they're, they're, they're so tight. They're, they're worse than supermodels. Yes. And their brains have been compacted down and they're nowhere near the smart dogs that they used to be. Uh, in fact, the health of them, and this is where I, I, I'm heading to, is that particularly with dogs, mongrels 
are the healthiest dogs. Yes. When you breed a particular, you know, you say, what, do you own Alsatian or how's his hips? Yes. Not good. Not good, no. And it's a common fault with Alsatians because that's the breeding. They've tried to get this particular look in the dog. The end result is we've messed it with bad mutations and... And even the dog breeders now are starting to realise that they're causing their own problems because they are, um, with these individual um, breeds of dog, they're reducing the genetic pool down and down and down until all these um, genetic defects yep. are starting to show themselves in the actual physical dog. So the problems in the DNA are coming out in the, 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 the dog as we see the dog. So the original, Noah wouldn't have to take two Alsatians and two Collies onto the ark, he would just have to take two canines, yes. which could also have included the wolf and the fox and the... Yes, and you know what? Secular scientists would tell us today that all dogs have come from um, one original pair of dogs. Yep. So again, science is catching up but, with the but biblical what, account. Again, what they're trying to do though, they're, they're trying to use natural selection to prove evolution. Yes. With a little chart that goes, here's the original canine, and then it branched off into wolves and foxes and dogs, and then that branched into this and branched into that. Yep. See, that's evolution. You go... No, it's not it's evolution. It's not evolution. And I would say to those people, put all those dogs in, into the wild and see which one survives. And it will be the wolf that will survive. And the dogs that we see today have almost certainly all originally come from a pair of wolf-like creatures. Right. So the, the dogs that we see today, they, they, they're great for their individual environments that they're in. Uh, and um, we have a, a snoodle. Yep. Um, which is a cross between a poodle and a schnauzer, and it works in our household. But right. if, if it wasn't in our household, it would not survive. It wouldn't survive, no. No, you've you got to look after it. And, and, and let's take that to humans because we talk about, you know, what race are you? Are you the, are you the Maori race? Are you the African race? No, there, there is human race. There is one race. Created in Adam, through Adam and Eve, came down. We're all the same race. Yes. We've just diversified. Yes. And this is where the pigmentation comes in as well. Yeah. Um, we have a, a wonderful photograph of um, a family. Uh, there are twin girls. Oh, this is the, the, the family from England? Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Twin girls. One of them is very pale. One of them is very dark. Um, they are um, from parents who are mid-brown. And uh, when we show this picture to people in our, um, in our talks, uh, it, 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 the light bulb goes on. People realise that, that um, there is only one human race. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, the, the difference in colour between people can be a, a very minor difference compared to all the other differences. People can be closer related genetically yeah. um, between different people groups, uh, different coloured skin, um, than uh, for other, other genetic yeah. um, uh, features. I, I, ironically, um, Shakespeare, well, not ironically, but Shakespeare says this in The Merchant of Venice when Sherlock says, cut me, do I not bleed? You know, yes. I, I, I'm human, just the same as you. Yes. Um, the problem is, though, when we go away from the biblical account that we are all, as the Americans would say in their constitution, we are all created equal, equal or in the whatever the document is that they have there. Yes. We are all created equal, but evolution says, no, 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 no. Lighter skinned people are more evolved than darker skinned people. Then we get the Aryan problem with Hitler. Yes, and, and there is a double standard here because the scientists today will tell us, oh, no, 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 we can't, but racism is wrong. So the scientists are telling us racism is wrong. You can't distinguish between people groups, but evolution if evolution is true, then we would expect to see these different people groups having different intelligence, having all these differences, and that there should be some that are more um, fit yep. than, than others. So they, they like to have their cake and eat it, basically. They, yeah. they want to say, although the, the, we can't be, racism is wrong, they have no basis for saying that racism is wrong. Whereas from a biblical perspective, we are all descendants of Adam and Eve. There is only one race, yeah. so there are no um, differences. And this goes to the gospel again in that uh, sin ended through one man. Christ, uh, the second Adam, died for all mankind. Yes. He didn't just die for Middle Eastern Jewish descendants of Abraham. And going back to the discussion we had earlier, um, some of these uh, interpretations of Genesis, they have to start having um, hominids before Adam who were spiritually, they, they, they weren't human. 
and when you start to introduce those sorts of things into, into um, try and fit that into the biblical text, all of a sudden you get this situation where, uh, and th there is um, one particular organisation that, uh, uh, because of the way they, they interpret the time, they have people living in parts of the, country, of the world that are much, much older than Adam, or their, their descendants are much, much older than right. Adam. Yep. So um, they, they're having to say, well, hold on a second, those people aren't from Adam. So then you start to think, well, are those people going to be saved by... Um, by Christ's death. Yes. Yeah. So they tie themselves up in knots. Uh, it's... Um, yeah, don't, don't think it through. No. No, no. All right, I wanted to look um, a, a bit at, uh, we want to look at the gospel and how that fits in with, with uh, creation and Adam and Eve next time. Uh, but also that's uh, Jonathan Safady from CMI's got a new book out on, uh, see, he's, you can see he's excited about it already. So we <laughs> want to talk about that next time. I hope you can join us. Make sure you click subscribe, click the bell and all those sorts of things and uh, check the link in the description.